let's walk through one multi-step energy problem where we're going to be taking a 10 gram piece of sodium from 25 degrees to 950 degrees. So the way I know that the sodium is going to undergo some phase changes is by looking at my chart of numbers and figuring out the temperatures at which the sodium would melt and boil. So what I'm going to do is draw a little rough sketch of that graph we were just looking at where it goes up, over, up, over, up. The first thing I'm going to do is look up sodium's melting point and boiling point because do you know what state of matter sodium is at 25 degrees versus 950? Does it start as a solid, a liquid, a gas? Does it end as a solid, a liquid, a gas? I don't know off the top of my head, so I wouldn't expect you to either. So let's look at sodium on that chart. And let's find out when sodium melts and boils. So I'm going to scroll back here and find sodium right here. And we can see that sodium melts at 98 and boils at 889 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put those two temperatures on my graph for the melting point and boiling point, 98 and 889. So the melting point was 98 and the boiling point was 889. You want to put those temperatures on first because you need them as reference points. You don't know if your substance is starting in the solid stage, liquid stage, gaseous stage, or ending in which stage if you don't have these guys as reference points. So the next thing I'm going to do is put in the temperatures that are in my problem. If I'm going from 25 to 950, 25 is below 98, so it's down here somewhere. And 950 is above 889, so it's up here somewhere. So in my problem, I'm going to start here and end all the way up here. So this is going to be a five-step problem. The first step is going to be warming up my solid. Then I'm going to have to melt my solid. Next, I would have to warm up my liquid. I would then have to boil my liquid. And then last step, I'd have to warm up the gas. So let's break this down step by step. So I'm going to do part A first, where we're warming up our solid. When we're on parts A, C, and E of the graph, we said that we could use Q equals MC delta T, because in that red highlighted section of the graph, I am having a delta T. So I get to use MC delta T. So if I was heating up a 10 gram piece of sodium, now I need the C value for sodium. I am currently in my solid stage. So I need sodium's solid C value. So we go to the chart and we find sodium's solid C value. That's the number right here, 1.23 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now when I go to plug in that number, now I need the delta T. Now be careful, the delta T is not 25 to 950 degrees because it doesn't stay a solid in that whole temperature range. That's why I had you guys draw the graph because we're just focusing on the red part of the graph just from here to here, and that's it. So the delta T for this part is 25 degrees to 98 degrees. We're just working on that little piece of the puzzle. So the final temperature is 98, and it starts at 
5 for part A of my graph. If I throw that in my calculator, I'd get 897.9 joules. I'm not going to do any sig fig rounding just yet because this is really just one piece of a much bigger problem. Next up, part B. Part B is where we're melting. We need to make it across that horizontal line right here. So if we're melting, we can't use MC delta T because there is no delta T. It's staying 98 degrees that whole time. The mass of my object isn't going to change due to law of conservation of matter. If I start with 10 grams, I'm going to end with 10 grams. But uh, now I need for melting, the equation is Q is mass times heat of fusion. So I need to find sodium's heat of fusion number. So I go to my chart, and I look up sodium's heat of fusion number right here, 113 joules per gram. So we plug that number into my equation and get 1,130 joules. So I've made it across here. So I've completely melted, but now I'm going to keep putting in heat energy. So now I'm on part C of my graph. I'm in this section now, the green section, where it's a liquid the whole time. I'm just warming up that liquid. Well, if I'm warming up a liquid, it stays a liquid the whole time, but its temperature is changing. I get to use Q equals MC delta T. The mass is still 10. Now I'm going to use the liquid C value because I just melted in the previous step. So I need sodium's liquid specific heat. So that number... I can find right here, 1.39 joules per gram degree Celsius. We plug that number in for our C. Now I need the delta T. Be careful, the delta T is not from 25 degrees to 950. We're focusing on just the green part of the graph. And the green part of the graph starts at 98 degrees. Right? It starts right here, and then it ends right here. So we're focusing on just this little chunk right here, 98 to 889. So those are the temperatures I'm going to use, 98 to 889. It ends at 889. It started at 98. So that little piece would take 10,994.9 joules. Almost done. Two more steps to go. So I just warmed up my liquid, but if I keep putting in heat energy, eventually it's not going to stay a liquid. Eventually, it's going to melt, or excuse me, boil. So we're going to be on the boiling part of our graph. If it's boiling, we can't use Q equals MC delta T because there is no delta T. It stays 889 degrees Celsius the whole time. So I would need to use mass times heat of vaporization. So I still have 10 grams, but now I need sodium's heat of vaporization. How much energy does it take to pull those liquid particles apart and turn them into gaseous particles? It requires quite a bit of energy, 4,393 joules per gram. So we plug that value in for C. So 43,930 joules to do that step. You'll notice that it takes a lot more heat energy to get something to boil than it does to get something to melt. It only required 113 joules to get it to melt, 
4,393 to get it to boil. It's a much more heat intensive thing to get something to boil, pull those particles apart so far. Our last step, now that we turned it into a gas, we just boiled it a second ago, but we gotta climb up the mountain here for our last step that you see in purple. So if we're climbing up, now we're staying a gas the whole time, but we're changing the temperature of that gas. So we get to use MC delta T, but now since I'm in gaseous mode, I need the C value when sodium's a gas. So I go to my chart and find the C value for when sodium is a gas right here, 0.904. I use that 0.904 in my equation, joules per gram degree C, and now I need the delta T. The delta T is not from 25 to 950. We want just the delta T for the purple section. The delta T for the purple section is from 889 to 950. 950 is the hottest it gets, 889 is where the coolest gas temperature is, and that little chunk, we'd get 551.44 joules. If we add up all the pieces of that puzzle, if we do A plus B plus C plus D plus E, all of them, we would get 57,504.24 joules. And then sig figs, since I was just doing an addition step here, addition rules say round to the one with the least number of decimal places. Since some of our values for A, B, C, D, E don't have any decimal places, that's how I'm going to round my answer. 57,504 joules.